Hey guys and gals, Nary here from Drake Wing Gaming. It's Sylvia and me on Twitter, The Gaming Drag. Today I'm coming back at you with the Let's Play episode of Angels with Scaly Wings, Anna's Path. So, y'all, before we jump into it, just wanted to let y'all know that our Patreon is now for as little as $5. Y'all can help support the channel, get some awesome rewards like permanent access to our community Discord server and full access to upcoming Not Safe for Work videos. Anyway, y'all, let's go ahead and jump right back in. Alarm chain, you were up. Let's go. And tonight might be right for love. <laughs> All right. Uh, what kind of restaurant is this supposed to be? The self so Hmm? <laughs> Seltzer? You're a bad girl, Hannah. I know. How well can you hunt? Me? Even if I knew how, it's not like I have any equipment here. Equipment? What a sissy. You've got hands and teeth. What more do you need? A long-range weapon, maybe? Like fire? I suppose even you could make use of that. All right, since I'm apparently the only one capable of acquiring food, I'll be right back. Anna walked over to a fenced enclosure of animals that reminded me of sheep. She crouched and squeezed herself through the bars, after which I lost sight of her. Waiting game 2.0, start. It took only a couple of minutes for her to return, dragging one of the animals behind her with her down bloody jaws and hands. Jesus. Dinner's ready. Oh, what kind of animal is this? It's called a mouflon. Anyway, do you have a part you'd prefer? Since, see how nice I am? I'm even letting you choose first. Uh. Uh, kind of, uh. Ah, I'm gonna ask my. <laughs> no problem. Using one of her claws, she skinned the dead move on and divided it into various pieces. You won't use grilled or raw. Grilled, let's prepare it properly. Raw meat carries a significant risk of diseases for us. How inept can your species even be? You can't hunt on your own, and you need tools and help at every step. You don't even have claws to cut things up. I'm not sure how you could ever survive in the wild. Seriously, what god did you piss off to end up like that? <laughs> I guess after millions of years of evolution, nature decided that we didn't need those abilities anymore. Instead, we got very articulate hands and arms and our upright stance. Those let us do many other things. Like what? Who builds everything in your society? Who's responsible for the delicate tasks like assembling electronics, manufacturing, or cooking and bartending? That's mostly us, the runners. We've got proper hands, after all. Now compare your arms to mine. Our arms are much longer and have way more mobility. Especially our fingers. They have an incredible amount of articulation. The difference between you and me is about as big as the difference between you and another of your species. Just imagine what we could do with our advantages. Oh, you think you can school me? Sure I can. Don't get cocky. We've overcome the limitations of individual species with all with all of our technology. Actually, we have technology back home that is far superior to yours. I'd love to see it, though we've already gathered plenty of information on your tech from the databases contained in the PDA. What will you, what will you do when we catch up? If you get there, we'll see. She opened her maw wide before a liquid shot from both corners of her mouth and onto the ground below the parts of the move below the parts of the mouflon she had prepared. For a few seconds, the liquid burst into flames, heating up our dinner. That's a neat trick. I bet you wish you could do that, huh? Right? It comes in handy. Uh, how does that work, anyway? Don't you ever burn your mouth? Not at all. They're actually two different components. They only catch fire. They only catch on fire when a, when a sufficient quantity of both is present. Interesting. Huh. Uh, interesting picture. Jesus fucking covered in blood. Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ, Anna. Look at that poor animals in the fucking background, just dead. Was that an animal? Or was that a dragon in the background? The flames weakened and grew smaller until they until they went out, revealing steamy, appetizing pieces of meat. Help yourself! I grabbed a piece, but dropped it as soon as I felt the heat on my fingertips. Ouch! It's still hot! Can't take a little heat, huh? That's too bad. Unaffected by its temperature, she took a piece into her hand, tore a chunk out of it with her teeth, and started chewing. I guess your scales are a good insulator. Evidently so. How does it taste? Just wonderful. Stolen goods always taste best. I can already picture the old farmer reduced to tears after he discovers one of his precious mouflons is gone. Thanks. I could teach you a thing or two. I think it should be cool enough for your sensitive little fingers now. Carefully, I grabbed one of the pieces. But now I had to do you cool down enough to not bear to not burn me anymore and took a bite. It's like now water time.
uh, it kind of fucking sucks that Anna just, like, fucking killed one of, like, someone's animal. Or, like, farm animal. Like, that's really shitty. But she's not really hunting if it's in a, if it's in this enclosed area. <laughs> like a, it's like a dude shooting animals at a fucking zoo. It was a little bland, I had to admit, but not bad for something that was alive less than an hour ago and prepared in the wild. How do you like your mouflon, your mouflon a la Anna? I feel like a wild animal. What? Quite different from sitting in an expensive restaurant using their fancy cutlery and napkins, isn't it? Yeah, I like it. How often do you just go out and hunt on your own? Only when necessary or when I feel like it. I still go to fancy restaurants because I can afford it, but they don't mean much to me. For me, it's all about the experience, and one isn't necessarily better than the other. I can see your point. This certainly isn't how I thought the evening would go, but it was pretty fun. Anyways, I'm stuffed. Me too. There's still plenty left over. What are we going to do with it all? We can just leave it here. Hey, maybe the old farmer will help himself to it. Yeah, he should pay me for cooking him such a nice meal. We should probably leave before that senile has-been wakes up from his evening nap. Yeah, let's go. Well, that was interesting. Wait a minute, I've got something for you. Did a vagina. Here you go, your test results, black on white. Thanks, but did you really need to spend all that extra time getting this done today? I just wanted to get it over with when I had the chance. Maybe you should start thinking about not working so late on a regular basis. It might do you some good, Anna. You know, I think you have a point. I haven't been feeling like myself lately. There are various reasons for that, but working too much might be one. Today was kind of fun, so maybe I should make the effort to get out every once in a while. Speaking of which, now that our date is officially over, we should talk about your end of the deal. Of course. There's an opening soon where I can fit you in, and I'll call you with all the details. I shall be looking forward to that. Nothing going on today. I guess I can do whatever. Uh, spend the day reading. We've already met with everyone. Oh, I mean, I'll say that for their respective uh, paths. I don't know. Can you date Lorem? I don't know. I don't know all the other people you can date. Let's meet with Lorem. I went to the. I went to the bar where Lorem had suggested as our meeting place. When I looked around, I saw Bryce sitting at a table, talking to someone I couldn't see. I lingered at him for a second, but soon spotted Lorem in the corner of my eye. There you are! Oh, hey, Lorem. It looks like you've seen this before. Skip to the end of the scene. No, don't skip ahead. As you wish. It's good to see you. I thought you might not show up. Am I late? Not at all. I got here early. I'm kind of surprised you wanted to meet me here. I don't take this the wrong way, but are you even old enough to drink? What are you talking about? Oh, I see. I can assure you I'm a fully grown adult. My species doesn't get much bigger than this. Speaking of which, are you fully grown yet? How big do humans usually get, and how do you stack up, comparatively speaking? Oh, would you mind if I took some notes? Before we get to that, you haven't even told me yet what, what exactly this all this is for. Are you sure you're not a reporter? If I was, Sebastian wouldn't have let me meet you in the first place. Take it deal. Water time. I thought the uniform was just a clever disguise. It's real, though. Sebastian knows I work for the local post office. Excuse me, but this still doesn't really tell me anything about why I'm here. You're a postman who wants to interview me for... what, exactly? Sorry, I guess I got ahead of myself here. Maybe a full introduction is in order. After that, you can still decide whether you want to go through this with the... Through with, yeah, we'll go through this or not. Uh, sure, go ahead. I recently graduated college with a degree in computing and moved in here with a good friend of mine. This town doesn't exactly offer the best opportunities to put my degree to good use, though. Then why move here in the first place? Living in the city can be very expensive. I can always move later when I get a job there. I've got other plans right now, though. I'm working on a video game. Exactly! Video games and computers are just starting to catch on in places like this town. Making good content will be very important to give a good first impression. Its humans have always been part of our media, books, movies, and now games. With you on our side, this could be an amazing opportunity. 
Well... Oh, maybe this wasn't such a good idea after all. I don't know, you don't seem so thrilled about doing this anymore. Besides, your job must be really stressful and you're probably already in the spotlight all the time. And now to top it all off, you got some postman harassing you for an interview. If you wanted to leave, I'd get that. Stay. Well, I'm already here and have nothing else to do, so let's make the most of this. Yes, thank you. At least I won't have to be so careful now. With a reporter, I'd have to worry about things being misinterpreted or being taken out of context. You should still be careful. What you tell me now will influence how your entire species will be presented in my game. Don't worry, though. I'll treat this delicate matter with acquired finesse. Hey, yourself. We haven't even started yet. I'm sure of it. How should we do this? Let me think. Why do you want to make this game in the first place? I've always wanted to make a video game. I've had this idea for a while, and it seems now is the right time to do it. It's almost as if you arrive at the perfect moment. I don't know. Don't you think that my visit will overshadow your efforts? People may not be so interested in playing a game about humans anymore if they had a real one show up. Good point, but the vast majority won't, won't get to meet you personally anyway. If I say I did model the humans in the game after you, people will flock to it to get a similar experience. <laughs> ha. I guess you could say so. Okay, but why focus on humans? What makes us so important? If there's one thing that people here love, it's humans. It doesn't matter if they just see them in the media or believe in them as mythical creatures. For me, humans were always real. I just didn't know whether I'd ever get a chance to meet one myself. I guess I can cross that one off the bucket list. Now that we're here, I can tell you that no expense will be spared to make, to make our portrayal of humans as accurate as possible. For good reason. I just love humans. If you say it like that, it actually ends up sounding pretty weird. Besides, what if I turn out to be a horrible person? What would you think about humans then? It wouldn't change anything, because I wouldn't base my opinions of an entire species on interactions with a single individual. Fucking thank you. And what is your current opinion of us based on? Just the myths we have in the previous portrayals of humans in our media, but I suppose that's why I'm here talking with you right now. I want the truth and all of it. Telling you all of it might not be such a good idea. Oh, yeah, I guess that would take a lot, of more, a lot more time than we have today. Anyways, what's the actual game about? Uh, what do you do? Like now, water time. Ah, delicious. Strawberry mango bubbly water. It's a community simulation game. It all starts with the player's character moving into a procedurally generated community, which is inhabited by all kinds of mythical creatures, humans included. Mythical creatures like humans. Mm-hmm. Not only are the towns you move into unique, but the inhabitants are too. There are a variety of traits that get randomized, both in looks and personalities, the Sims. There are many things you can do, but it's very open-ended and you can live your life there however you want. Oh, interesting. It is! At least, I hope others feel the same way, same way about it. What other mythical creatures are there besides humans? I haven't worked that out yet, but humans alone give us a lot of material to work with. Uh, how so? The question of the mythical human can be tackled in a variety of ways. There are many different interpretations of what humans are like. For example, in general, the mythical human can be divided into three categories. Firstly, the human as a physical creature. Secondly, the human as a non-physical entity. And thirdly, the human as a spiritual being. Let's start with the physical aspects. Sure, since one of our myths tells us that the human who created us eventually turned into a dragon, there's a lot of room for interpretation as to how similar humans actually are to dragons. I can see you don't have wings, but most of us are able to create fire in some way, or at least have a breath weapon. How about you? Make fire, does that count? Not really. Having hands that are dexterous enough to do that is remarkable, though. It is a bit strange, though, because our myths also say that you, that you gave that ability to... That you gave that ability to us. Interesting. Maybe it's meant to be taken literally, meaning that when that ability was given to us, you lost it. Or maybe we never had it in the first place. Humans are known to have created a lot of things out of nothing. After all, we only needed to discover how to create and use fire because we didn't have a natural ability to do so. We have a proverb that sums this up pretty well. What is it? Necessity is the mother of invention. So a lack of natural abilities drove innovation forward. What an interesting thought. Here's another thing. You may, have, you may have many different images of humans, but in the end, only one can be right. 
All right, y'all. I'm going to go ahead and pause it right there. Thank y'all so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, ring that notification bell, and uh, check out our Patreon if you can. It always helps. Anyway, I love you all. I'll see y'all in the next video. Bye-bye.